Welcome to this fourth video with Devox down at Air Studios talking about their album Telegraph. The album's out now and the vinyl's coming very soon. All of this is linked in the description as well as the previous three videos. In this video we talk about modular synths and music theory which provides us with a nice framework for discussing staying in tune, keys, melody, the musical aspects of performing as a duo with modular synths. So in this series of videos talking about the album, we spoke about music theory, and melody, harmony, kind of musical intention going into performing and writing music. Well, first of all, it's a modular, it's not the most in tune instrument necessarily. How are you both staying in tune with each other? I mean, simply tuning oscillators, but keeping in a given key, moving between keys live or during recordings. What are the kind of tools you use? We, I mean, we will, Communication is the first tool. Yeah. <laughs> uh, obviously, we need to sort of agree on a on a, uh, on a key and a mode, um, and that's usually determined by whatever kind of thing we're trying to create. And mm. we we don't always go for you know there is a conversation you know for every track that where we say, you know, um, what kind of thing are we going to go for? Mm. You know, what sort of what sort of tempo? What sort of feel? Is it going to be quite beats heavy? Is it going to be quite ambient? Is it going to be quite textural? Is it going to be quite soundscape? You know, what it, and that is obviously driven yeah. by what we're listening to at the time and stuff. And we even create um, we create playlists for each other, uh, and we share playlists of kind of stuff that that's, that we feel we want to do. Sometimes, I mean, some of the tracks on the album, you know, um, uh, have come from live performances, and it's a similar thing depending on where we've spoken about this before with you. In fact, I think Ben, when we were, mm. and with you know, the, 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 the sort of audience or the type of event that you're playing will determine the, 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 the type of patch or the type of composition, mm. whatever you want to call it, uh, that we go for. And then, and then we'll, but we will agree a key. And, uh, and if we've spent too much time in Dorian, for example, we'll move yeah, on to yeah, Phrygian or something yeah. else. Um, and then, so that's really uh, uh, the kind of starting point is agreeing that, I think, first, first of all. And then we can, that allows us then, of course, to work independently in terms of. Uh, uh, programming, uh, setting up our, tuning mm. our oscillators and knowing that when we finally, you know, come together for our rehearsal that, you know, we're yeah. going to be hopefully in the same universe. We definitely try to, try to create some variation between patches and sometimes with the, the fact that you can get two different modes working together and that can, mm. you can, and that can create some, some interesting, yeah. some interesting uh, sort of musical movements and, and quite often um, when we do go through that process of doing our first run through rehearsal together because we've generally kind of worked on each other's patches after we've decided what key we're going to be in a kind of rough idea of tempo and vibe. Um, it's really quite exciting that first kind of run through because we're not quite sure what each other has done. We might have sent each other some demos, but um, but in terms of... Yeah. Cre and I think sometimes it's really important, I think sometimes uh, and for, for people that have got quantizers or got sequences, they've got certain preset modes and scales they can they can go through, kind of really do explore them, you know, when you've got got a got a certain sequence running, just using Aeolian, which is kind of a pretty common one generally, sort of that natural minor thing. Um, it's very easy to kind of just keep going back to it again and again and mm. just switching to Mixolydian, which has got that real sort of, it's, it's, it's uh, optimistic, but it's not happy, and and Phrygian, which is definitely something that's uh, got that sort of slightly sort of eastern edge to it. Um, can do, yeah. Can do, and it yeah. and it really helps to um, it really helps to just change things up as well. Um, but scale quantizers are so important. We've both got the Intelligel uh, micro scale, yeah, yeah. and and that's and kind of uh, sort of moving that around, and sometimes just sticking with octaves and fifths can be quite useful as well to create a real openness so you're not kind of giving a specific sense of something more major or more minor it kind of creates just fifths and fourths interestingly really, though really as well important. just picking up on what you're saying i mean some of the tracks on the album as we've already said have come from live performances mm. and uh, they they happen in pairs because of course i'll create a patch nino will create a patch but we'll work in the same key the same mode and we'll set the patches up in such a way that I'm able to improvise over Nino's patch and vice versa yeah. and we'll keep key modules aside that allow us to do that. So we sort of give birth, if you like, to two patches at a time or two tracks at a time. So it's quite productive in, in that sense, yeah. there being two of us. Um, and just in answer to your other question about tuning, tuning is a bit, I mean, everybody who performs with modular knows that it's all a bit seat of the pants. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah. And uh, Super Booth 2018 was an example of yeah. that. Yeah. Yeah, I can't remember, was it? And it was <laughs> you. <laughs> it was, were you drifting in the heat or the cold? It, it was, yeah, because oh, yeah. it came over to, to my patch and then suddenly yeah. 
I was not, yeah. I, I was, you, you kept you kept it down very well because I had no idea. Yeah. <laughs> but he was scratching around, Paul was scratching around, trying to, why is, why is my muscle? And I kept tune, leaning over. You leaning can see over. me on the video for that, leaning over and saying, it's, I'm completely I've out. Com- this is just not working. <laughs> um, and yeah, so you just Still go. Still don't know what happened. You go, I don't know. You, you tend to go for <laughs> percussive elements that immediately get onto a percussive yeah. element and yeah. sort of pull that yeah. out. Yeah. Um, but what I tend to do, I mean, we'll set the rig. I mean, the first thing you do is switch the unit on before a live show. Yeah. Switch it on straight away because um, whatever else happens, and then don't let anybody unplug it because whatever else happens, that you're at least warming your oscillators up yeah. as soon as possible. Because you know we want it, the longer they're on, then then the, the less they're going to drift. So and it's yeah. usually about twenty minutes. So mm-hmm. so you want, so the first thing you do as soon as you get the box up before you sort of do your additional patches. I mean anything that's on a sort of um, a stackable, we have to sort of unplug them and label them up. You can see it on the rigs yeah. actually that, because we're working on it at the moment. So that when you close the case, it doesn't bend. Buttons yeah. and things like yeah. that. Um, but the first thing you do is switch it on and get it warm, get the oscillators warming up. And then you get it all set up, and then we'll run through it in headphones and run through the patches independently. And, and, um, and then it's nice if there is time to then go step away from it and then come back to it a few minutes later. And just before you kick off, we, we both have little tuners, you know, little micro yeah, tuner type things, yeah. cool yeah. things. And you just go through them all, you get a system. Yeah. And I, I think I use the headphone out from Rosie. Yeah, uh, as my sort a of as a, tuner as a cue for, for the tuner, yeah, and I and I use that, and I go through, and I just sort of tweak things. It's a lovely feeling, I have to say. When some, what, I've got this habit now that what I do is I'll set, switch the system on, leave it for twenty minutes or so, and uh, and I won't test anything until sort of uh, until everything is ready to go, and it's the system's been on for about twenty odd minutes, mm. and then I'll just I'll just press play. I won't even I'll just put the headphones and just see if it's and if it's all in tune, it's a great yeah. feeling. Mm. But that's not always the case. <laughs> no. I, <laughs> making music on my own with Module, I love not tuning to anything. I, yeah. I get this question mm. comes up, what are you tuning to? And it's like, well, I've mentioned nice. Aeolian mode, just a natural minor on a quantizer, and I go, well, yeah. so C, D, E flat, and so on, but I can tell you now it's not a C because I've not turned the yeah, tuning sure. anywhere yeah. near it. I've not even thought yeah. about it. Yeah. Of course, one oscillator is like a pivot point almost. Yeah, yeah. Set whatever that. the sequence yeah. is, and I, you just tune to the sequence. Yeah. I find it really liberating, but that doesn't work with anyone else. Just yeah. in the same way it wouldn't work with a guitar and a bass player, there's got to be a reference. Yeah. yeah. So with that kind of reference... It's a nice place to be. Yeah, in place. You mentioned um, the IntelliJ quantizers, the kind of mechanics of, of the quantizing. Do you run everything through those so you can both live manipulate we're moving from Aeolian to Dorian to Phrygian, Sometime, we're going from F to G or... Yeah, sometimes. I mean, this is why we can occasionally move from one mode to another as long as the same notes are, are there, you know, because if you can, yeah. um, you know, there's sort of, and even sometimes when you get, uh, when you kind of cross scales together, kind of occasional clash, but actually sometimes it can work quite nicely, mm. you know, so cool it's, it's all ex- exactly <laughs> blue notes. So, yeah, and I think there's, um, uh, and I mean, often, I mean, Turing machine out into micro scale, that's that's kind of a common, you know, I think we use that quite quite a lot. And obviously the the modes within in Stilson the, the set. And obviously the great thing about the micro scale is that you can create any scale you want. You can change yeah. it. And we did uh, we recently so. did a track um, for another uh, album that's uh, another compilation album that, that's coming out this year. And um, we we used for that we used um, we used the two HP kick mm-hmm. via from triggered from the Turing machine from the uh, via the pulses out from the Turing machine via yeah. the micro scale yeah. uh, and it's lovely because this little two HP sort of uh, module voice just suddenly becomes this really expressive um, percussive uh, lyrical voice yeah. in the system. It's it's great sound two HP. Yeah, it's the sounds, bass line. It, the weather's kicks. It's great. I think using the, the quantizers rather than it all being locked down into say sequences with yeah. preset mm-hmm. quantizing yeah. built in. You can play it, like you said, with octaves and fifths, you can have a, a locked, looped pattern going round that will yeah. just play octaves, so occasionally yeah. it will just bounce, but some notes will just stay on the root. And yeah. You can build in, something I really enjoy doing is building back up from octave, octave and fifth, yeah. and maybe a chord mm. tone, and then right through to Absolutely. the full scale. Yeah. Yeah. And then messing with the scale control on um, Turing Machine as well, just to control yeah. that, and then once the, it's the into a, a quantized pattern, yeah, then yeah. playing with the range, so you have the same relative shape of the pattern, but it's yeah. just expanding yeah. and contracting. Start off quite narrow, yeah. and then you kind of push it and push it as the track I mean, when we on. want more yeah. certainty and we want to pin things down, which, you know, some of the stuff does do that, then we mm. use yeah. um, the Stilson's 
Stilson Hammer Mark II is great for that, and uh, that that tends to be our kind of solid kind of sequences come uh, come from the Stilson. That they're, they're the sort of you know the workhorse of the systems. Yeah, um, uh, and Rene as well, using Quantas output. On the yeah, Rene although I'd say I mean I tend to use Rene more as a performance sequencer, so I'll interrupt it all the time. And uh, mm. I mean I've, I've on, I think. I have used it, I think when we were in uh, Superbooth last year, I used it to sort of step through patterns on the stilts and it was quite a nice way, yeah. I was just using it as a wave. Yeah. yeah, patch changer, I think had the, it was almost. driving the bass and I was, yeah, I was just literally moving through patterns on the stilts and from the Rene and that was quite nice. But usually how it will work is that will be a performance thing. I also have a clock, uh, I use a clock uh, divider going into it, I've got a 4MS clock divider going into it and I play with the, uh, the clock that's driving it as well, mm. so you know, just, just to mm. speed it up and slow yeah. it down and get it doing different things. And I get, but what, so the left hand will be driving the clock and the right hand will be interrupting the pattern mm. and holding notes and that sort of thing. It's really expressive, so it's a great performance tool, but then the Stilson is sort of doing the donkey work, running the sort of main sequences, and of yeah. course we set up the macro knobs on the, uh, on the Stilson so that we can we can bring in variation on on on, a, on the pattern, yeah. um, bring little fills on it, and I mean they're great. You've got those two macro knobs, and um, it's quite hit and miss. I find that when we're writing, we tend to sort of you know spend a bit of time just playing with setting those up, so that when you mm. turn the knob full fully sort of clockwise, you get to kind of where you want to be yeah. with it. Yeah. And if you can, if you drop it back halfway, it takes you somewhere else. But you've got to check because you can go it can all go horribly wrong if you're not careful. Yeah. Um, so. We sort of set things up like that, I guess. And also with the clock divider as well, especially with the Paul Scott, this thing is definitely part of the D-Box sound is using the, the mutant hats. And so it's kind of got a pattern running, but then just change suddenly, suddenly divide the clock or multiply it by some vast amount to get these kind of really fast runs and kind of suddenly moving to the triplets. There's nano ran for that quite a lot. I'll have nano ran set up yeah. it and I'll have the plug just hanging out. I just quite like the fact of just getting the plug, yeah. just dropping it in yeah. and suddenly the hats go crazy and yeah. do all sorts of different things and yeah, I don't even know what they're going to do. And having that balance between those, as I said, like Stilson does like the donkey work and sort of those, those predictable parts of the patch that people kind of lock onto, but then it because you've got the foundation, it gives you the ability to then be more random with other elements um, and kind of create, because you don't want to just have predictable loops of 16 going round and round in circles. And on the other hand, you don't want everything completely random. Um, it depends what you're doing, but but we, yeah. kind of, we, we find ourselves happiest when the we've sequential got... Sequential switches are good for, yeah. you know, I mean, I'm, I'm sort of starting to use those more in, in, in the sets, so um, that's quite a nice way of bringing mm. a you know, nice subtle variation on the hi-hats, just getting them moving yeah, you know, every very subtly. Yeah, fourth bar every, round exactly. can be random, but yeah. not endlessly yep. random, things yeah. like that. Yeah. Yeah. So, we both systems in tune, again, either live, well, live or studio. How are you approaching the kind of voicing of it all? This idea of, you know, bass, lead voices, chord tones between multiple layers. How's that approach? Is there a kind of one takes bass, one takes lead? Does it depend on where the tracks come from? It depends how we're approaching yeah. it, doesn't it? Yeah. I mean, if I mean with, I mean what we've what we've done with the with uh, what, the way we seem to be working at the moment uh, is that we're coming in to set things up with no nothing planned, nothing mm. set up independently, and we we set up in the same room together, um, and uh, we. Um, just start with a blank canvas, and we're finding that we work quicker that way. Yeah. Um, so we we we're making decisions quicker. When the thing we're, in a day, we're we're completing a patch within a day, which yeah. is remarkable. And then um, and then it's just a bit of refinement afterwards. And honestly, it, he could be playing bass, I could be doing the bass. Yeah, it it's sort of almost it's, yeah. it depends it who's sitting there just, in front yeah. of it or who mm. decides yeah. to take the reins. Absolutely, but it, it, it seems to change. There isn't really a, yeah. a, a set way in terms of the voices. I mean, we. If, if it has happened in a more conventional way that, you know, we've set up independent patches and then we're just performing on each, each other's patches, then of course it will be my patch, for example, if it's my patch, will have the, the driving bass line, it will have the lead voice, it will have... Um, but then on, you know, like telegraphy uh, or telegraph, uh, Nino will come in and, and sort of add um, textual sort of pads mm -hmm. using chord and... and uh, um, which you know does bring a whole new dimension yeah. to things. I think, so, and also in terms of the kind of the studio approach and kind of starting from scratch, I think a few times we almost thought about well, should we kind of have some maybe some ideas planned or have a few sequences in. But I think the didn't that's work. that spontaneity. No, it didn't work. That, the spontaneity is really important to make sure that yeah. we don't come in with preconceived ideas of where we think it should go because otherwise we end up kind of you know clashing musically and it's uh, it's quite quite interesting the first time we decided to right let's 
build something from scratch together in the same room. And we kind of, I think we were slightly apprehensive. Is it all yeah. going to go suddenly wrong? We're going to find out that, yeah. oh, are you putting the filter there, are you? Oh, okay. <laughs> and, oh, mm. oh, oh, okay, that LPG, right. Make coffee, yeah, just making yeah. coffee, I'll be back. I'll see you later. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> sort of, but it was, uh, it was, I it was, um, yeah, I'm, I'm sort of feeling like I'm not really, <laughs> can't express myself with Devox anymore and need, need, need to maybe, um, find my own way, you know. Um, yeah. So does the the approach of just blank canvas or mm. one of you presenting a patch that's, say, the skeleton of the track, and you, Paul, you said that Nina may, Nick may come in and start improvising textures. How does knowing music theory kind of aid that? Does it just save time ultimately? Or do you have a kind of approach to, well, I can hear the bass lines doing this and I want this kind of mood. Does it get you somewhere quicker? I th yes, I think there is, there's definitely, so for example, I, I'm always a big fan of in, inversions. I always like kind of moving that bass line so it's not doing the root note of every chord all the time. Yeah. Sort of move it around, yeah. it almost becomes its own melody part in a way there. Yeah. And also it stops everything being quite so rooted, you know, effectively kind of first, and especially second inversions, it feels if everything's kind of floating, it keeps the tonality. Kind of and I mean, moving. I th but that, that yes. applies to all, you know, uh, composition and music yeah. production. You're, you're yeah. constantly playing with shapes and inversions mm -hmm. to try and evoke a certain type of, you know, sound or style sometimes. Yeah. Um, so inevitably that, you know, the same applies. I mean, it's still music. And um, uh, it, 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 it makes, um, uh, it does allow you, having a bit of music theory does allow mm -hmm. you to, 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 to then break those conventions and be as abstract as you want, but you do it from a more informed perspective. Yeah. And yeah. I, I, I think that I, and I, yeah, I do think it's important. Um, uh, I mean, sometimes we do stuff that's, you know, pr pretty out there, but it, it's, it's kind of, um, uh, but starting from a point of certainty is sometimes useful. Um, you might not always end up there. Um, I mean, it depends on the type of track as well and how much freedom and movement you've got. I mean, opera, for example, as you'll hear, is a very... It's almost like three key changes. Yeah, it modulates another, a lot. And I mean, he sat there, I mean, Nino sat and mapped it out, kind of, you know, there were, um, uh, and, and wrote the whole thing out before yeah. we performed it. Um, uh, so, it, but then other tracks are just kind of grooves yeah. and they yeah. just, just, just evolve. And I think that's probably the same, same with everyone, but I think it is mm. a... Um, I think it does help, and hopefully, you know, when you hear the album, you you can hear that. You can hear that there is um, there is depth, musical depth, uh, as well as sonic sort of, you know, yeah. depth. That it, it's actually going deep musically, um, uh, so I think that makes it interesting. Yeah, and opera is a great example of when I first heard it, I thought I knew where it was going to go, and the first kind of change or resolution didn't go where I thought. I thought oh, this is interesting, and then it does give you sometimes what you want to hear. There you go. Does, yeah. Is that did that just in terms of writing it, uh, you Nino? Know, you wrote out first. Was that intentional? Was it a deliberate? Because the kind of theory is there. I'm, I'm yeah. really trying to sing well, it, the, yeah, the, no, the praise of music theory. No, in this video, well, but, it was there was part. It was part partly intentional, part accident, which is always kind of the best combination, I suppose. Um, I'd sort of written out these these chord progressions. That we were kind of experimenting. I was kind of playing down the key step using the arpeggiator on the on the key step. And we had we a were, sample running as well. We had a sample Some running as well. Weird obscure yeah. thing that we found yeah. on an old hard drive and and I was playing with that yeah. in Morphogen, and, and the two things we were getting some really interesting mm. um, combinations were happening at times. Do you yeah. remember? And it was it was getting, and it was like, okay, this is you know quite interesting. And and then there'd be. Uh, it was. I mean, the, 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 the idea of kind of because I'd written out these parts, and but actually I hadn't kind of put them together. I, like, I really like that progression. I really like that pro progression, and I hadn't really thought about what key they were necessarily. So we did these things separately. And then putting them together, there was there's, there's almost, I suppose, there's like four main movements to the, yeah. to the yeah. track. Right, right, and from yeah. the first to the second one, kind of putting them up, right, okay, we'll move to that second part now. So we'd got these from peak, so we'd got these separate recordings, put them together. It's like, wow, that's some, that's a real kind of angular change, yeah. but it works. And then there was another one which um, which was kind of no, it needs to kind of stay in this key now. We can't have it yeah. change again. It's kind of it's it's on its way. It's on its journey. We don't want to suddenly send it off in another branch. So so at that point, right? Okay, right, we'll re-record that. But actually, interestingly enough, there was uh, the bass part for opera um, because I recorded the bass part using the STO and kind of essentially playing the notes using Rene like a keyboard and. Uh, because, oh, right, okay, so we, we've we re-recorded different key, but the bass part's in the wrong key. So well, rather than re-record it, just to make sure, does it work, just in Ableton, uh, 
pitch the 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 bass part, the STR recording, down four semitones mm. to make it fit the new the new peak, and it's like that works really well. But sounded actually, great. the tone sounded yeah, much better than it did before. Yeah. Yeah. So I then we then re-recorded the bass part for the other movements as well, deliberately oh. four semitones steel high, yeah. Yeah. and then brought them down in live because it just gave a sort of sense of graininess, almost like this strange kind of rhythmic element to it as well, just with the bass part. So mm. it was kind of part intention, part accidents, part well, let's use that accident and mm. and kind of sort of go with it because we like what it's doing but again that's part of the, the wonderful nature of working with modulars you get these happy accidents you kind of stumble across things and that's amazing right let's maximize that so mm. i really like the pitching down always seems much more interesting than up i'm mm. not a big fan of pitching up <laughs> particularly <laughs> chipmunk effect <laughs> yeah yeah it doesn't seem to it's, it's building sampler instruments and things that you can always get away with going down a, a few yeah, semitones yeah you're just taking samples out rather than trying to repeat samples through the, that time stretching but process it's an interesting approach of musical knowledge theory intention from the start crude let's just shift this whole thing down as yeah. audio or on yeah. paper if you're scoring it out as yeah. well um, and I, I think the album's full of these moments. It sounds like to me, I knew, having spoke to you both before, I knew you both teach music, you're aware of music theory, things like that. But it doesn't sound, there's no kind of paint by numbers element to it. And that's what opera did in that I felt like I knew where some bits were going to go. It's, it's music with, with an idea of what some kind of resolution is going to be when you hear certain intervals. But then others that I thought, no, that's where I don't think I've heard anyone do that move before or mm. not between maybe the way the bass was inverted was different or the way it shifts it, it, is really it, it, interesting it's, it's explorative and uh, yeah. uh, it, you, know, you know that's that's what makes it exciting and and um, it is for us as well i mean it, you know we want to be surprised by it as well i mean, I mean that's the, that's what, why you do it i mean the whole devox project the, our whole involvement in new modular is about not doing things by numbers not getting it's breaking with convention understanding what con the conventions are and then and then you know, breaking with them and and and, and trying to to, to ex experiment and that's what that's what keeps it exciting i mean it has to feel like it's it's new all the time yeah. Um, and again, that brings us back to that central theme and concept around the album, this idea that it's a very transitory experience. Mm. Um, uh, so it's got to feel like it's, it, there is genuine movement going on there, not just in terms of the, the, uh, uh, the sonics, but also musically, it needs to have that certain element of uncertainty. So it's wanted to mm. pick that up and you, you, that's, that's yeah. the yeah. hearing that. That's what that means, mission accomplished that's to a certain extent. Yeah, and I think for, for, this, for this part of the video, uh, well, series of videos talking about theory and modular, that's a really nice kind of closing point that the theory side can inform where you want it to go. If you want it to mm -hmm. get somewhere, you may already know that you invert in a certain way or move through a certain pattern, you'll get to an end result. It might tell you what not to do. You might think, well, I don't want to do this. That's predictable. Here's all these five moves that happen in Western music that I don't want to do. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Or when you are just experimenting, it maybe gives you a way to get further away from the original thing or pull you back into these separate sequences that you've had. You know, if you, if you put these two sequences up against each other and they don't work, it maybe gives you the kind of glue to get them to work. Yeah, and what I think... What needs to come between them to make it work, maybe? Yeah. Or, you know, there is... There, I mean, New Modular is... You know, people talk about East Coast and West Coast. Let's definitely not have that conversation again. <laughs> um, but I think it's fair to say that New Modular... Is it sort of sort of leans more towards a West Coast philosophy? There's much more room for for that sort of more for working in the abstract. And I'd be lying if I said that's, you know, that uh, that didn't excite me. I think that's mm. brilliant. I mean, that that is such an appeal. It's such a draw to. A, I think a lot of people working with New Modular is 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 that potential for working outside of classical Western musical form and structure. Mm. Um, but at the same time, I think that also means that if you are working with this format, then having that bit of music theory, I think, allows you to get the most out of that so that you don't end up disappearing in complete abstraction where there's no narrative left for people to hang on to or hold on to. But the fact that you are working within that, with yeah. the, all that uncertainty makes it really exciting. So like creating a bridge between those two mm. extremes almost in a yeah. way. It's, yeah, because yeah. we haven't touched on the kind of tonal palette of any of this yet, which mm. will be the next video we'll talk about mixing and production. Yeah. Um, yeah. I suppose maybe another area we should maybe mention is um, uh, rhythm and, and meter as well. I mean, one of the things on the album, we did look to explore different time signatures and not have everything in 4-4. Um, and whether that was the case of um, either going for, so for example, AO2s in 9-8, um, 
and uh, Dinamo is in kind Complete of six nightmare eight. To play. <laughs> 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 the, but the nine eight kind of almost think of it as three and six kind of made a little more yeah. more sense. Um, but yeah, it's, and it wasn't kind it's, of a, it's not a repeating like it's quite a convoluted part. Yes, and, and um, <laughs> yeah, I do seem to remember somebody walking into the studio while I sort of I don't know if I had my tongue hanging out of my mouth or not when I was playing <laughs> playing the part, but I was definitely concentrating hard. <laughs> <laughs> Not now! <laughs> <laughs> but it gives the listener a different experience as well as you creating it. Mm. You know, teaching drums is my day job. Talking about uh, tuplets a lot of the time, triplets, quintuplets, yeah. and finding mm. words, uh, paracetamol for five or individuality <laughs> for seven. Yeah, and, yeah. You know, I spent yeah. hours screaming at kids over them playing this, individuality, individuality, <laughs> trying to get the pattern. <laughs> yeah, but it just, it gives, it makes you work differently, I think. Once you're on the back foot, with something else, yeah. if you're maybe not experienced in anything yeah, outside yeah, 4-4. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Bed sitting, dagging and, and it, fish. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Czechoslovakian yeast, Czechoslovakian yeast. I don't know why I guess it. But it lets other accidents happen. <laughs> Talking about getting away from the theory, I think once rhythmically your, your, kind of, your guard's down mm. with everything else, you're trying to figure something else out. Mm. And as a listener, I think you can really play with the perception yeah. and the piece. Yeah. Would, you know, Tonally, you can take them somewhere, and maybe yeah. that just needs pinning down with more yeah. of a four to the four floor. Yeah. Yeah. And help them get through it because it can be too abstract, yeah. as you say. It can, and then having little elements that perhaps you just got to track on still, and just got seven steps for this. So it's yeah. constantly shifting, and that goes back to the to the old kind of minimalist trick, you know. Um, yeah, polymeters run in. Yeah, different absolutely. track lengths on different parts. Yeah. And it's and I think that's uh, one of the really good, especially if you're not if you're you know, a drum percussionist you can think of playing in seven or think of playing in five, um, but if you're not, but Monta's really well, I can make this in five and I don't have to worry if I can play in five or not. It doesn't matter. It gives you that that easy kind of access to these kind of strange kind of timings and, and yeah. sort of and the polyrhythms that's kind a of nice way of looking at it. I mean it, yes it's, we, it's almost makes it more accessible absolutely <laughs> in a way to those I think that's yeah. a really important Strangely. point I think it does make it more accessible and it does um, allow for people to experiment with those kind of more it encourages you, you to work outside of you know the norm um, mm. much more I think a lot of people would find yeah. that exciting and mixing the elements and mixing yeah. different time signatures as well like with the Kalanor and Kala Soda where some elements are in uh, six eights and elements are in four four, and just what we pushed in the mix would suddenly kind of you think everything's in four, and then suddenly the kick comes in and it's in three, and then those then you stop thinking in four and your brain switches to three. But then if I uh, it's like the bass part suddenly kind of make it a bit brighter, suddenly that comes forward and suddenly you're back in four again, and it yeah. kind of recedes and then you're back into six, and and that's and that and again just trying to. Musically trying to do that in performance would be a nightmare. Yeah, well, you know, you'd, yeah. you'd have to be really proficient to be able to do that well. So, but Modular allows you to just do that really easily and just for the slightest m maneuvers and not necessarily just, oh, a clear element in three and a clear element in five. It's just, just about just, you know, in term, terms of changing the tone of a sound, could just force your brain into thinking a slight different and change of perspective. So, um, which is where, again, you know, Modular has that. It's not just about the notes and the rhythm, it's about mm. that tone and that texture as well that kind of just Allows forces. the listener and, and, the, yeah. and, the, and the artist to change their point of, continually change yeah. their point of audition, sonically. Yeah. yeah. If that makes sense. So the kind of mechanics, just to round up with this kind of section, but the mechanics of the different time signatures, have you, are you sharing clock, are you sharing reset, are you just playing off each other with the reset, is it independent so you can be musically more playful or is the one kind of central yeah. clock reset? We, share we, we, share we, we don't share reset actually. We've we not don't, done that. We no, we don't. Really. We don't share reset. Um, but there's a first time for everything. <laughs> we um, we 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 share clock though. So um, mm. and you know we we swap the clock. Or it's, you know yeah. Uh, if there is a change in if, tempo, if we there's will a change in tempo, clock, yeah. we will. Yeah, that's yeah. right. It's, uh, but so yeah. So if we if there's a clear change in tempo, I mean we usually go to a sort of ambient textual yeah. section. Yeah. Yeah. With Nothing with the like, effects, and at that point the clock lead comes out. We flip it round. Yeah, in two out, out two in. Yeah, literal change between the yeah. two yeah so that's a, obviously an, a useful device for that you know get a bit of radio music into clouds yeah and sort of then get the blend right up and um <laughs> <laughs> i mean times when we played for example we played at uh, ready pop festival in 2017 and we knew it was kind of you know festival tent and people were going to be dancing so for that right we didn't want to kind of do a breakdown halfway we wanted to keep it yeah, so yeah. we yeah, kind of point. that was a good example of where so we, we kind of stuck with the same clock yeah. yeah, yeah, that's that's yeah, that's a really yeah. good point. So yeah. and that was you know so yeah we kind of again it's the audience listener expectations the environment. Determined.